Hey folks, Steve here. How you doing? Take 17. Last 16 takes, way too much jibber jabber. I, and I, I just, it's, it's a disease. I've got the disease and I can't find the cure. Wish I had cat scratch fever, but apparently Uncle Ted has that one monopolized. So I've got the jibber jabber disease. All right, well, quickly, this is a requested video. You know, let's, let's have an updated video on the trailer. I have been putting trailer videos out on occasion, but you know, they're not seeing them or it's not specifically what they wanted to look at because I'm focused on something, maybe the battery bank or something like that. And they're looking for the rest of it, I don't know. So this video is gonna be like what I call a fly around, but it's basically a quick tour of, of just the arrangement and a few things in, in the trailer itself. If you want that and you're not interested in the jibber jabber between now and then, just skip ahead and, and get to the fly around and, and you'll have a good time with it. But here's the quick jibber jabber and I'm gonna be quick about this. So I've had requests on trailer update videos, so this is one of them. But another video that I would like to do, it's been on the books, is a deep dive where you go into every drawer and look into everything. I love deep dives and I'm willing to throw another deep dive out there because there are other people that like them as well. And so a deep dive video, that'll be coming when I have the time to literally you know, open everything and go into everything. And the last video is about how I built this thing. Now. Interestingly, um, I have no videos of this build at all because it predates me having YouTube channels, so there would have been no reason to video it. Also, interestingly, I have no photographs except for two photographs of this kind of empty trailer with a couple of cabinets inside. So normally, when I, if I'm going to photo document something, I take way too many photos. Uh, in this case, I have like two, so I don't even know why I have those two at this point because either it's I have all I have a thousand or I have zero. In this case, I have two. So that, that how I built it video will simply be as much as I can going through like various parts of the trailer and explaining how I built the thing to hopefully answer some of those questions. And that'll be kind of a targeted video for those people who are really super interested in that. But here's the other thing, and here's where the jibber jabber came from last time, more so than right now. In a couple of years, next year or the following year, my plan is strongly to buy another trailer. That, another, that other trailer, that next trailer, is going to be a mission trailer. Ron Polk has trusted mission trailers for the last couple, and so if he trusts them, I'm going to trust him too. So I'm going to get a mission trailer, and it's going to be eight and a half wide by 12 long, which is what Ron Polk has currently, his orange one. I have no idea what color mine will be. And I think I want seven foot height, because this one is, I think, six on the outside, so it's less than six on the inside, which explains why, in my build, I have Tool Cubby 1 and Tool Cubby 3. I do not have, like Ron Paul, Tool Cubby 2, which sits in the middle, which is a blend of the other two, which gives you a whole other array of where you can put tools. I don't have that. So I have two and three tools in some of these cubbies. And so by going higher, going taller, I will have the ability to build up and be able to get things spread out. And that's what I want to do in the next trailer because it's going to be larger. I'm going to be able to spread out. Am I going to get more tools? I don't need more tools. I have everything I need right now to build your house today in this trailer. However, it would be nice to spread them out and kind of get them a little bit better organized than they already are. So the new trailer will allow me to do that. And it will also give me the opportunity to do a complete build set of videos so I can answer any and every question that I could think of on how to, how to build one for yourself. This would complement Ron Polk's videos because he already did a whole video series on how he built his smart trailer out. But I, you know, even I watching them had some questions, you know, seemed like there was a, a thing, because they weren't how-tos, you know, just like, well, how did he do that, why, you know? And so I would attempt to watch all of his videos then I would go ahead and see where can I fill in some gaps. And so when I video myself doing things, I would try and fill those gaps in as well as just general build. But hey, here's something I didn't see in the Ron video, but here's how I did this. So hopefully that will be the next thing. Okay, I've cut a couple of minutes off the jibber jabber. Hoo -hoo -hoo. So let, let us get to the kind of the quick tour, again, what I call the fly around, updated uh, 2024. All right, so let's get to it. So over here, I have my battery charging station. So obviously you can count them. There are five chargers here. I have three fast chargers. I've been very, very fortunate to have three of these in here. I do have a fourth one in the house that eventually may come out here and replace one of these. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I have these. So uh, the 113 loads on the left and the 115 loads on the right. So these batteries don't interfere with each other. Nothing I can do here, but I've spaced them out to where the batteries have no problem. So these are always plugged in. You can see the cords lead right through there. And then I have electrical inside of this cabinet here where these battery chargers plug in at. Sitting in front of the trailer, you can see that I have three narrow shelves. Uh, Ron Polk would call them viewtainer shelves. I don't have any viewtainers, but they are narrow shelves for just uh, kind of grab and go things. I have uh, batteries and glues on the top with some uh, magnets that hold tools. Down here, I have a lot of markers and a 
And then down here I have all kinds of pencils because I was always showing it up at a job thinking that I had pencils in my apron, in my belt, and I didn't. So now I do. And I'm a great one for pads. I love writing stuff down. And then I have a couple of reference things, glasses, and some grab-and-go pencils. Things. Typically wearing hearing protection whenever I can, eye protection when I need it, and then I use hats because my ears are so small that I can't hold a pencil. So the hats are my pencil holders. Behind those... I have uh, some headsets uh, that I use primarily for electrical. On the end of the trailer here, you also see that I have a lot of cleaning supplies and of course, uh, you know, like bead killer and things like that. Down here, some quick grab WD, some first aid, water bottles and such. I do have, when the air compressor is plugged in and charged, I do have air on the end of my trailer for cleaning tools when they come in. When the trailer is plugged into shore power, those outlets are always hot and that is the light switch which will operate that countertop light and then my LED run all the way down there. Down here six foot level and then that is a six foot drawer and you can see by the label everything that is in there. Around the corner from the charging station I have a double port charger right there. I also actually have one of these uh, again like a 112 uh, plugged in underneath all of that and I have three random chargers back in there that I just grab and take into a job site if I need to. Right here you see all of my extra charged batteries that are not on tools and pretty much all of my tools have batteries on them. There may be one or two around here especially the 60 volt that don't have a battery. Top shelf here on I just really ran out of tool space and so this is my, my DeWalt cordless electric staple stapler and then here are the staples that go with it you see my tool cubbies and above the tool cubbies I'm also utilizing that space as well it's not much but I do utilize it and then here are the top tool cubbies which are you know roughly 16 inches tall by probably 20 inches deep so here's the uh, joist drill SDS rotary hammer up there is my mixing drill that would be my de-handled 60 volt blade left rafter saw and there is my power planer in there would be the cordless reciprocating saw and I also have one of those uh, one-handed reciprocating saws there. Cordless six and a half inch blade left and then behind it is a Ryobi corded that I have set up to cut masonry like uh, hardy board things like that cement underlay. Cordless vac. Over here is the sander bank so I have a couple of cordless sanders down there orbital and a palm all the sandpapers behind and then up here I have the corded belt sander. In the last cubby I have my roofing gun that's uh, still one of my air tools and one of those palm nailers and then a cordless framer. Down here you would see, you know, these things are kind of labeled at this point. So the cordless 16 gauge air stapler, cordless 18, cordless 23 pin, 60 volt grinder, two jigsaws, one jigsaw permanently set up with a Collins coping foot, two routers, one corded, one cordless, moldy tool with some blades, seven and a quarter circular, circular track saw, 60 volt drywall. It's a drywall gun and a drywall trimmer in the back, impact wrench, and then a right angle drill behind that, drill and driver in there, drill and driver in there drill and driver in there, a couple of flashlights. Down here you see I have a series of drawer banks. Ron Polk would call these drawer bank one and two. I think this is drawer bank one. The narrow one down there you can see is drawer bank two. And so I have two drawer bank ones. That's a three inch, a three inch, and a six, and a six inch drawer if I remember the measurements correctly. And everything is labeled so I don't even lose stuff at this point. You can see all the labels there. I'll just open uh, the kind of the prime real estate drawer, show you what's in it. Okay, so here you go. Here's the prime real estate. These are things I would grab and go with, especially the laser tape and the stud finder, but everything else I do grab on occasion. And so you can just see generally that the drawer is organized. It's not uber organized, but it's organized and it has a lot of stuff over there. So there I have some straight edges and some marking tools, things like that. Extra blades. And that would be indicative of a lot of these drawers. Not that they have this stuff, but they have, they are organized. The next drawer bank over here, I would have a lot of hand tools in the top. Below that would be all of my nails for my cordless nailers. And then you see down here I have basically a, a, a drawer for plumbing and I do have some hole saws in there. And then down here would be basically just saw parts. I used to have routers down in there, but now it's just saw parts. Over here, which I believe would be drawer bank two, it is small because I have onboard air compressor. It's a Makita Mac 5200. And that stays on board all the time. And so I needed a cubby for that. So this is simply one third of drawer bank one. And Ron Paul on his plans calls it drawer bank two. Otherwise I have a few more hand tools up there and some extras and then I have anything like blades and some hand saws down in there. In the nose cone I have 150 feet of air hose right there that reels out off of that uh, adapted hose reel. Down here is how I bring power into the trailer so that is my 100 foot 10-3 extension cord that I plug into shore power and then I pigtail from there all the way into the trailer over here and then the trailer is powered from there. Okay, the rest of this, uh, no real place to put hole saws, so I went ahead and just uh, put a hanger up and there are my hole saws and a first aid kit. Down there, I just have some extra wire barrels, 
My two uh, job site lights, really happy to have those things. Up here is one of those narrow view tainer shelves. This shelf right down here is a dedicated shelf as opposed to being modular. It is supported underneath by some major L brackets. And this is supporting a 40 pound plumbing grab and go toolbox. So anything and everything plumbing that's not in that drawer is going to be in here. And this is what I'm going to take onto a job site. Now moving around the corner here, I do still have extension cords blower, two foot stand, or you know, like a two step. Right beside it, I have some saw horses and the independent stand for my table saw. Underneath the plumbing hanging from that dedicated hook is my carpentry belt. Right beside my carpentry belt is my electrical belt. Both are ready to go. Underneath the electrical belt, because I have nowhere else to put it, is my Klein bag. And that Klein bag is my is basically the rest of all of my electrical that I would take in when I'm exclusively doing electrical on a job site. And this is a hardware store. This would be kind of like my middle-sized hardware store. Uh, I have medium-sized quantities, if you will, and then down here I just have some extras and some chemicals. It's all labeled, and those labels are more or less current. And I am very, very blessed and happy to have all of this hardware, from a lot of self-tapping to wood screws to construction and sheet metal and so on and so forth. Right beside that, in what would be drawer bank three, according to Ron, that's drawer bank three, but I adapted it to have two pull-out shelves, and then even though this is a pull-out shelf, I never pull it out, and this is what I would call my small tool garage, because I didn't have anywhere else for it. So there's my small tool garage, you can see what's in there, I have some drops in the back, obviously job site radio, Forstner bit kit, and I have two laser levels, one in the back and then my big kit right there. Underneath you can see labeled. This is everything drywall for me, so if you get in there, you can see that I have, uh, you know, all kinds of things drywall. <clears throat> Down here, this is also labeled. Basically anything and everything cabinetry. I am overflowed right now with a few extra screws. And then I do have a uh, door and window kit, and I also, in the back behind all of that, I have a picture hanging kit. Some people actually pay me to hang pictures. And below that, I have my beloved hardware store. This is the only other drawer I'm going to show you at the moment. There is a small hardware store in that I have everything here in small quantities. Those are four ounce jars, whereas around the corner, those were eight ounce jars. These are four ounce jars. So these are just small quantities of everything. And I never knew how useful washers were on a job site. Otherwise, I have just a lot of everything else. From there, you can see uh, yeah, I do have a secondary hardware store with some other things like zip ties and Velcro. And then I have my PPE as well as tape and shims. Then I have uh, some kind of, you know, trash bags, a few things for paint. I have my caulk down there. And then that bottom door is really specialty tools and nails for like roofing and framing. So this cubby that I created holds everything PEX for me for plumbing, except for that tool bag up there. So this is then my bulk hardware store. These are all Milwaukee organizers and you can see that they are all labeled. All of these shelves do pull out all the way down here to the tap cons. And there is an organizer in there, by the way. All of these shelves do pull out to lift up, pull forward. And what will happen is you can see where that notch, that notch falls behind that piece of hardwood right there. And then it falls down in. That keeps this from pulling out during transit. So if I want to access these screws, that's what I do. I can then pull that just over there, let that cantilever, and then I have full access to all the screws. And that would be true for all of those organizers. They can all work the same way. Slide it in, shut it. So the last part of this tour, of course, is the large tool garage. And you can see miter box, table saw are the two big tools. I have that support rod right there, which I would call active restraint, and it doesn't really restrain the tools so much as that basically supports this floating roof or ceiling, this floating shelf right here, which is only connected through uh, glue, screws, and dados on two sides. And so it supports this because that is a 60 pound saw on a two sided supported shelf. You can see behind the tools, wherever I could utilize space, so push blocks, extra blades for both tools, the standard array of measuring tapes that seemingly, <laughs> that seemingly everybody has to have, three, two or three different framing squares, my bevel tees, speed squares, three different sizes. And to wrap the tour up, right below here, I have a 48 inch drawer, so it's a little bit smaller than the drawer over here. And so with that drawer, you know, it's labeled, if you can read those labels. I do have a level garage beside it with two foot and four foot levels. I have two of each. 
And then I do have a small cubby over there that, that holds two tough built saw horses. I've taken advantage of the top of my tool garage. I have a couple of my uh, shorter, my two shorter tracks for my track saw. Support for the miter box. T-squares are up there as well. Here's my long track. Using toggle clamps to hold it up, that is my long track. And you can see I have clamps in the rafters, uh, belt sander sandpaper up there. So I have a lot of little miscellaneous things also kicking around the trailer. But otherwise, that's my trailer. While there are details, you got the general idea of that's how I've arranged things in this trailer. And that arrangement really hasn't changed much in four years. I have kind of dialed things in. I've moved a few things around. I have maybe rearranged a drawer and I have thinned out. But this pretty much, I, I kind of, either I nailed it on the first try-ish, or it just naturally arranged itself and I got lucky, or the first way I arranged it pretty much is what I got used to, whether it's the best arrangement or not, and now I'm just used to that arrangement, and so whether it's overly practical or a little bit less practical, that's how I, I can get to the tools and get to the materials. Okay, folks, thank you for sticking with me for that tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I am looking forward to the deep dive where I will do a lot more with the details. I can pull all these tools out. And again, if you're not a deep dive person, obviously you wouldn't tune into that. But I'm a deep dive person. And so for those of us out there who love those things, I will provide an updated one because the last deep dive, the only deep dive I ever did goes all the way back to 2019, 2020. And it was one of the very first videos I ever shot. And it is, I filmed it and it was, it's painful for me to watch. It's informative, but man, it is painful. I had just no editing capability. I only had the pause button on my phone to, to, to stop and start and do everything. It was, it was early in my YouTube career. And so things have certainly gotten a little bit more refined, a little bit better. Whether the content has gotten better, that's a, that's an argument, but at least the videography has gotten better. All right. Well, that being said, uh, there is a lot more to show here as far as just the subtleties and the details and the efficiency things built in. But for a quick tour, I hope that was what you were looking for. Well, folks, if you would, if you already hadn't, like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It's free for you. It helps me out. It helps me grow the channel. Ring that bell if you want notifications when I submit, when I put videos out, which you know, I'm not on any kind of a regular schedule. But at least you have the opportunity to go, nah, I don't want to see it. Or, yeah, yeah, that looks like a good one. <laughs> okay. Well... That being said, I think it's time for me to go. <laughs> Maybe a little too much iced tea today. You all take care. I know you deserve it, so you have a good one. I will have one too, just because you deserve it and you're watching me. I think I deserve it too. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. It's got so much I want to say. And nothing, and nothing you want to hear, but it's things that I just want to say to you. Uh, yeah, because, you know, it'd be cool if we could have a conversation. Uh, but unfortunately, with comments, it's just, you know, I guess that's what the, a live stream would help. Ooh, live stream to a, a live stream tour. Light bulb. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm just goofing around now.